All right, guys, here's the story. Back in 2020, my sister and I had plans to go to Peru. The main reason I wanted to go to Peru is because of its amazing trekking that it has to offer. We were set to go in May 2020, but then COVID happened. You know the whole spiel. So in 2021, I had to rebook our tickets. The airline gave us one chance to rebook, and we had to rebook by a certain time. At this point, Peru still wasn't opening up to tourists and kept shutting down randomly, so I really didn't want to risk our one chance we had to rebook our tickets, only to have Peru shut down and not allow us in. I knew I wanted to go to South America, and I knew I wanted to go trekking somewhere. And that's when I saw this lovely video, made by Craig Adams and shot in Colombia. Colombia has honestly never crossed my mind as a country that I've wanted to travel to before and hadn't until then. I got on the research train and before we knew it, we had booked our flights, got our COVID tests and we're flying to Colombia. We spent some time in Bogota and Cartagena, then got on a flight from Cartagena to Pereira. From Pereira, we went to Salento. We spent several days in Salento, where we rode horses, ate fish, bought some souvenirs, finished last minute hiking trip details, and contracted a really bad stomach bug. That part was lots of fun. The morning of the hike, we took a collectivo jeep to the Valle de Cocara, where we began our hike. Within just a mile from the beginning of our hike, we got lost. Then we got unlost. And here we are starting our hike. It may go terribly, but maybe it will go sort of not terribly. Those first several miles were amazing. The views were unreal, the weather was perfect, and the trail was dry. We tried to follow Craig's route on all trails to the best of our abilities, but we veered off on several occasions. With a sweat. Several hikers passed us coming down as we were on our way up, probably because it was just the end of a weekend. We eventually reached the very first finca. I actually don't know if it was a finca, it was just a place where some guy told us that it was going to take us 10 hours more to reach our destination for that night, and encouraged us to stop in and buy some food, then turn around and go back. We didn't believe him, and kept going. Directly after this finca, the trail turned into the absolute worst trail I have ever seen on planet Earth. There was mud, mud, and more stinking mud. It didn't even feel like we were on the trail anymore. Nearly dark out. Well, it's gonna get dark soon, really soon, I'm sure. It's almost 6 p.m., I think. And, or it is 6 p.m. And here we are, just trudging through the mud. Lots of mud. We had lots of ups and downs, but right now it's an up, sort of. We're close. We are really close to our destination. We were starting to think that our friend back at the Finga was totally right. At the pace we were going, we would be at our destination maybe, and that's a very strong maybe, by the time we were 80. Okay, so maybe it wasn't all that terrible. 
they actually did make it to the La Primavera Finca, which was our destination for that night, right after it got dark. And we were tired. Very, very tired. <laughs> but the people there were awesome. They gave us hot tea, made us some hot food, and showed us to our beds. That night was one of the best nights I've ever had in my entire life. You have no idea. Day two was perfect. Definitely the best day of our three days out there. Yeah, it was perfect. I'll let the footage speak for itself. Day three was a little bit nice and a little bit not nice. Oh, really? We're just getting our feet in the hot tub. wet and then dry so that we can put some hot spot things on them. Oh. So nice. Especially after last night, huh? <laughs> last night was a joy. Yeah, we slept. We packed up all our stuff and left Dormales Canyon early in the morning. We were having a very nice day until we started noticing a dog following us. My sister and I, from previous experiences of dogs following us, decided, oh, we'll just ignore it, and figured it would eventually get bored and go back to wherever it was from. <laughs> well, I guess Colombian dogs are different because several long miles down the trail, and it was still with us. Guys, this is not good. We've come like six miles from where we first started this morning, and this dog has followed us the whole way. And we thought that by now it would go back. Ugh. And it's really, yeah, terrible. Because we don't know what we're going to do with it if it comes all the way. We went to plan B and decided to chase it away. We attempted chasing it away and yelling at it. Nope. This dog had officially imprinted on us for life. It followed us across rivers, through cow pastures, up steep inclines, and down through some of the deepest mud we have ever encountered. Warm bed, hot shower, Wi-Fi. Despite my anxiety over this dog following us, it was a beautiful day.
Oh, we've tried everything to get rid of her. We get it. Go home. <laughs> This thing's cool, guys. Next to my boot. That's how big it is. It's big. Alright, don't get killed by it. Or eaten by it. Abby's grossed up by it. But I think it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. We're here. Still in the jungle. Yay. It was dark when we finally arrived in Juntas, which was our final destination. That dog was still following us. Now, I love dogs, don't get me wrong, but this dog followed us for 15 miles to some place that it had never been in its life. It made me so frustrated that we couldn't shake it off because at Juntas, we asked around and a sweet older couple put us up in their hostel for the night. But we obviously couldn't bring the dog inside our room. So I had to stay out on the street where she was being harassed by every street dog out there. We tried to get hikers going up to take her with them to the area where it had started following us from. But no one wanted to take it, understandably. Honestly, for me, that was the worst part of the hike. I just felt bad for that dog because there was no way we were going to be able to take care of it. And now it was all of a sudden super attached to us, but we had to leave. Speaking of leaving, the next morning, sure enough, we had to pack our bags and caught one of the first collectivos headed to Ibog. The dog was nowhere in sight. I don't really know where it went. So I just kind of find myself hoping that she either found her way back home or was adopted by someone in Juntas. And that was our Craig Adams hike experience. Our footage was crappy. Our knees were shaking, but our hearts were full. Thanks, Craig, for inspiring so many of us to challenge ourselves out in this beautiful creation.